Welcome to the barely updated Samurai 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you Beretto Kenkyusuru better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this, while well, you cheated in ultimate. I still studied the blade. To this. Today I wanted to play Samurai with a functional katana controller. So, there's this thing. The series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you could research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heavensward Skills, level 70 for Stormblood Stuff, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to the hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still, and have since I'm making an updated guide here. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for any minor potency changes or skill changes or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Samurai is a melee DPS job all about doing big damage. You're fast too, but tends to feel slower than ninja or monk. But that doesn't mean Samurai isn't busy. A resource you generate quickly and must constantly spend, buffs to keep track of, and big attacks to launch out. It sounds like a lot more than it is, but it flows together pretty well, to the point that samurai rotations tend to be perfectly circular, leading to one of the more extreme, simple-to-learn, hard-to-master scenarios. You lack almost any way to support your allies, instead being the one everyone looks to to buff so you put out as much damage as you can. Your combos let you use EI Jutsu, and using EI Jutsu lets you use other big attacks, and it requires very little dancing around the enemy, letting you stand still much of your time which you'll need to for a few cast times. To obtain the samurai job, you must complete your level 10 class quest and be level 50. That's it. Aside from owning the Stormblood expansion, that is. Have these requirements met, head to the older Aetherite Plaza, and it'll be right outside. We have an entire set of role actions to deal with. You want these on your hotbars, for sure. I won't be going over them here, though. In the corner or in the description is a video on these skills. I recommend it as they are a real extension of your toolkit. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Samurai starts at level 50, so we have a lot of buttons in our starting toolkit. Level 1, Hakaze. Level 4, Jinpu. And level 30, Gekko. This is our first basic combo. You should hit your buttons in a combo in a row, never skipping ahead. The buttons light up when you have a combo. Follow the lights. The lights can mean other stuff too though, so don't get lost in the shuffle. This combo has a couple of different things to go over. Hakaze is a basic kit with 180 potency of damage to a target. This leads into Jinpu, a 260 potency hit to a target. There is also an extra effect, granting you Fugetsu for 40 seconds. Fugetsu is a damage buff, increasing all damage you deal by 10%. This is important to maintain at all times. Then finally is Gecko, which has two effects. This has a rear positional, which means it does extra damage when attacking an enemy from behind. The rear is denoted on screen by the picture shown now, the entire empty section behind an enemy. The attack does 310 potency, 360 with the positional. With or without the positional, you will gain Getsu, the moon icon on what is called the Sen Gauge. Getsu is one of three Sen, which we will use later. We want these icons, remember that. Level 1, Hakaze, level 18, Shifu, and level 40, Kasha. Once again, this is a full combo. Both combos are starting with Hakaze, and you can continue onto either pathway after Hakaze. Shifu is the partner to Jinpu, doing 260 potency just the same, but grants us the buff Fuka. Fuka reduces cast, 
recast, and auto attack delay by 10%. This is the buff that makes Samurai a faster job as a base. Like Fugetsu, you want to keep this buff up at all times. Finally, we have Kasha, the partner to Gekko, doing 310 potency or 360 with the positional. However, Kasha is a flank positional. Flanks are the sides of the enemy, and once again shown on screen with the picture's red portions. Secondly, it gives the Sen of Ka, the flower of our Sen gauge. Again, we'll cover what these Sen are for in a bit. Level 1, Hakaze, and level 50, Yukikaze. For the third time, the combo starts with Hakaze, which branches off three ways. Yukikaze is the final branch, doing 280 potency of damage to a target. It has no buffs, but also grants Setsu the snow icon on the Sen gauge. This combo has the benefit of only being two hits long for a Sen, which will be of actual significance in mastery of the toolkit. Level 26, Fuga. Level 35, Mangetsu. And level 45, Oka. This is our AoE toolkit, meaning area of effect. This is the skill set we want to pull out when there are three or more enemies to fight. One or two, stick with the single target attacks we already went over. Fuga is a basic hit. It does an 8 yom Kono AoE in the direction of your current target. That's a pretty big cone. It does 90 potency to all enemies hit. Then it combos into Mangetsu and Oka. Mangetsu and Oka are both counterparts to Gekko and Kasha, but also Jinpu and Shifu. Mangetsu will grant you the 40 second 10% damage buff of Fugetsu and grant you the Sen of Getsu. Oka grants Fuka the 10% speed boost for 40 seconds and the Sen of Ka. Both attacks do 120 potency of damage to targets in a 5 yom radius around yourself. Because of how these work, you want to alternate the combos. This keeps your buffs refreshed at all times, and gets you to have both Sen. Also, there is no AoE way to obtain Setsu, not that we would want to. We only want 2 out of 3 Sen with our AoE. This will make sense in a bit. Level 50, Make Yoshisui. This is another big way for us to generate Sen, but also makes getting our buffs easier. On a 55 second cooldown, this removes all combo requirements from single target and AoE moves for the next three weapon skills. You can skip right to Yukikaze, Gekko, Kasha, Oka, and Mangetsu and get all normal benefits, full potency, and all buffs. But this comes with a further benefit for single target. Normally Gekko and Kasha are not going to give us our buffs. Using Gekko and Kasha will now grant Fugetsu and Fuka respectively. In openers, this massively speeds up our buffing and ability to get into our full damage. We don't need to do the full combos just for buffing. And really, that is all you ever use it for. You'll do it mid-combat too, but you'll still only be using those five skills. It either does not affect any of the other skills in your toolkit, or otherwise is a bad choice to use it on those. If it doesn't give you a Sen, it's not worth using during Makio. Though as I said, some other skills we have aren't affected by Makio, and we'll be using those. But first we'll need to talk about them. Level 30, 40, and 50, Ei Jutsu. Ei Jutsu changes based on how many different Sen you have, 1, 2, or 3. At level 30 we only have access to 1 Sen, 40 we have 2 Sen, and at 50 we have all 3 Sen available. The Ei Jutsu button will change as you obtain Sen in the Sen Gauge. It does not matter which Sen they are, all that matters is the count. So let's talk about the actual skills Ei Jutsu becomes. And keep in mind, all Ei Jutsu have a cast time of 1.8 seconds. Level 30, Higginbana. Our strongest single target attack is Higginbana. Needing one Sen, it does a 200 potency hit to a target and applies a debuff to a target. This is a dot or damage over time. It does 45 potency of damage for a whole minute, 60 seconds. Dots work on a server tick, meaning it does damage every 3 seconds. With a 60 second timer, that's 20 hits, or a 900 potency dot. In total, that's 1100 potency for the full duration. That is both a good thing and a bad thing. It means you only need to worry about it every minute. On the bad side, if you want to use this, you need to consider if the enemy will last long enough. For context, one of the other Ei Jutsu is 640 potency with no wait time. So if an enemy is going to die in about 30 seconds, you want that other Ei Jutsu. Really though, this is mostly just for boss fights. Normal enemies almost exclusively do not last long enough for Higginbana to be worth it over your AoE. And those bosses will get too 
Maybe three uses of Higginbottom before it dies. Refresh the dot when it falls off and you think the enemy will live long enough. If it won't live long, skip it. Level 40, tank a Goken. This is why our AoE does not have a way to get Setsu, only Getsu and Ka. This requires two Sen of any type and is an AoE. It does 300 potency to all enemies in a 5 yam radius around you, like Oka and Mangetsu. If you are fighting three or more enemies, there's no reason to not use Tenkagoken. Your enemies won't survive for Hikinbana's duration, and it's stronger on three enemies than our 3 cent EI Jutsu. Really simple to explain, and really worth that high damage. Just to reiterate though, alternate your AoE attacks to get 2 cent, then throw out Tenkagoken. Level 50, Madari Setsugeka. Requiring all three of your Sen, this is the one that does 640 potency of damage instantly to a target. It's also a guaranteed critical hit that gets stronger under any critical hit rate buffs like Dragoon's Battle Litany. This is a really strong hit. If you're fighting a group, you're using Tenkagoken. One to two enemies, you're going to do massive chunks of damage with Madare. If you already have Higginbana up on a boss, keep throwing out Madare's. But again, it's a balancing act. If the enemy won't last long, you just skip Higginbana to go right to Madare. But if you just started a boss, or it's not even halfway dead, throw on Higginbana, then get to Madare. This is the overall main loop of Samurai. Use your combos to generate Sen, then spend those Sen on EI Jutsu. Tank a Goken for AoE, Higginbana for bosses, and Madare for when Higginbana is already up or the enemy won't live long enough. A lot more gets added onto this Koi loop, don't misunderstand, but it is key you get used to using EI Jutsu and the cast times involved. It's not a lot of casting, but 1.8 seconds is essentially a full cast time in this early phase. It's a loop that also will work as a timer for us in later levels. One more important detail, if you're mid-combo for whatever reason, you can EI Jutsu without it breaking the combo. This will likely come into play with the craziness of AoE. Tenkagoken will not break the combo after Fuga. Place your combos in a good position around your bar and you can easily keep track of your Sen without the gauge. And before we build up any openings, we have some more skills to go over. Level 6, Third Eye. On a very short 15 second cooldown, you are given a shield buff for an impressive 4 seconds. And it reduces the damage of a singular attack before disappearing, reducing the damage by 10%. This sounds absolutely terrible, but it's due to a lack of proper framing, and an upgrade in two levels. To skip ahead, it gives us 10 Kenki for every time you block an attack, so potentially that's 10 Kenki every 15 seconds, and we want more Kenki. As a result, it becomes way more useful to use this as much as you can. Get used to using it now even at lower levels, but even when it doesn't actively fuel your damage output, it is a defensive boost for solo content. A little bit of extra survival for the job that has some very difficult job quests, so it is good to start getting used to the idea of using Third Eye anytime you can. As for using it in parties, it's a bit easy to make sure it's a significant defensive help. You still have to time it, but in bosses, you have consistent spots for using Third Eye. If a boss is doing some form of raid-wide attack, or is targeting you for a mechanic or other potential damage, you can Third Eye to defend against it. Later on, you can almost always tell when one of these is coming with the cast bar. Remember the name of an attack, and you can always mitigate it. Overall, it's a simple skill with simple usage, but it can be of much bigger benefit than what the skill description makes it out to be. It's never going to give you a big help against a group, but one-on-one -on -one and bosses, you'll be reducing a lot more damage and gaining a lot of Kenki. Level 15, NP. A button we want to avoid at all costs. It does a measly 100 potency of damage to a target. You can use this from up to 20 yams away, making this a ranged attack option. Or you can just stand in melee range. Many players see they have a ranged option and feel like the game will lead them to use it, when 9 out of 10 times they had no need to use their ranged attack. They could have stayed on the boss and continued their combos. In the cases where you absolutely must run away from the enemy or boss, and it's not just for half a second, you can use NP for a bit of extra damage. Just make sure you're actually needing to move away from the boss. An AoE on you is not cause to walk away. An AoE on an ally is not cause to walk away. A boss-scented AoE that is bigger than max melee range is cause to walk away at the end of the cast bar. Only the end of it matters. You can stand in it for the entire first half and be fine. 
And with how big of hits Samurai does, you want to be pushing as many big hits as you can. On the plus side, MP will not break your combos. And if nothing else, after level 52, you can do it as filler in trash pools. If for whatever reason you're not in range for Fuga and AoE combos, which you always should be if you can, you can use NP to build free Kenki. But let's start talking about openers. Our toolkit at 50 is very basic, to the point that it's mostly just going through the motions of your rotation. We're gonna make Yoshisui to get a free EI Jutsu and then just... keep going. The only question to answer here is why we start with Madare and use Higginbon a second. The big reason is we can abuse the fact that Meikyo Shisui applies Fugetsu and Fuka. When we use Meikyo before we start the fight, the Gekko and Kasha apply both of our buffs. These buffs are extremely important with keeping our damage up. Since we're already at 2 Sen from applying our buffs, we go into Yukikaze just to get the 3rd Sen and use Madare. After this we can immediately push to apply Higginbana with the normal Yukikaze combo. From there, we'll just keep hitting all three of our combos one after another to keep getting Madare casts. Every minute, we can make Yoshisui for another extra Madare, also signaling we are at the point of reapplying Higginbana. That's really all there is to it. The only other note I could say is you may also wish to True North in addition to Makyo, or you'll likely miss out on at least the Gecko positional. Otherwise, we should move on into the rest of the Samurai Toolkit. Heaven's word time. Things are gonna get a bit more interesting. Level 52, Kenki Mastery. We now have a Sword Gauge, the Kenki Gauge. Certain attacks will now grant you Kenki in multiples of 5, with a max 100 for the Gauge. Gekko, Kasha, Empi, Oka, and Mangetsu will give us 5 Kenki each. Yukikaze will grant us 10 Kenki for using it, and as previously mentioned, Third Eye will give us 10 Kenki if the shield is hit and reduces an attack's damage. Without Third Eye gains, it takes an entire 3 combos to get 20 Kenki in single target, and 4 combos in AoE. Now you might think you could do the Yukikaze combo twice, but that means you will lose the Snow Sen without spending it first. So as a result, Gekko, Kasha, and Yukikaze combo leads to 20 Kenki, which is now not enough for our main Kenki spender. Level 52, Hisatsu Kaiten. No longer exists, and everyone rejoiced, cheered, and the world was saved. Level 52, Hisatsu Shinten. I will not be using the Hisatsu part of skill names when discussing them. Pay more attention to the ending part, as there are six different Hisatsu skills. Truncating the words to just the ending part will hopefully reduce any confusion. Shinten is your Kenki dump. If you are getting high on your Kenki gauge, Shinten to spend some of it. It costs 25 gauge and deals 250 potency of damage to a single target. Just be careful you don't overspend it in later levels when we have more uses than Shinten. If you see you're at 50 gauge or higher, you're pretty safe to use the Shinten. Weave it in whenever you need to for extra damage and not wasting any gauge. Level 54, Hisatsu Gyoten, and level 56, Hisatsu Yaten. I am putting these together due to how they relate. They're essentially partners. Both cost 10 Kenki to use and do 100 potency of damage. They both are movement tools. One for getting in, and the other for getting out. Gyoten has a range of 20 yams and is a gap closer. You rush at the target and immediately get into melee range. This makes for a good engagement tool when the tank has no breaks and is rushing ahead by even normal standards. The biggest loss of damage you can have is not being in melee range, so immediately getting in range as a battle starts is an improvement. Yaten is the opposite. It has a 5 yam range and launches you away from the enemy by 10 yams. This makes escaping from large AoEs around a boss much easier and safer, even if a bit niche. The better you get, the more you tend to greed your attacks and get into dangerous positions. This can save you from that greed. On top of this though, you are granted Enhanced NP. Enhanced NP boosts NP's power to a much higher 260 potency of damage. If you are in any situation where you've actually had reason to use Yaten, there are almost no situations where you wouldn't also use this Enhanced NP. Treat this like a combo, even if one button is OGCD and the other is GCD. The fact you can weave Yaten in means you lose no uptime either. Ultimately though, use these for their movement capabilities. Mastery and proper usage of these skills will lead to a lot more damage, but it's a bit of a journey to get there. Oh, and technically, these are just as powerful as Shinten for their cost. Level 60, Meditate. This is one of two skills locked behind a job quest you really need to go get your job quests done. 
These two skills are very nice to have, besides the fact that a full toolkit is just better. On a 60 second cooldown, Meditate forces you to stand still and cancels auto attack upon starting. If you move at all when starting Meditate, or at any point during the meditation animation, the skill will end. You must stay still. No attacking, anything. For up to 15 seconds, you can sit there and generate Kenki. It only works mid-combat and gives you 10 Kenki every 3 seconds, for a total of 50 Kenki. So you can only use this in combat, but you can't move during it or the skill ends. That sounds like a contradiction, but it isn't. This is for when there is downtime. By now you have seen plenty of bosses who will disappear from the arena and do an ultimate attack. While they are gone or unable to be damaged, use Meditate. This can give you a huge lead on your kinky management. Up to two extra Shintens, maybe a Gyoten or Yaten, and all the other options we're gonna get as we level. Put this out of the way so you don't use it by accident, but some way you can hit the moment you get to a downtime point in a fight. This was a very kinky focused expansion, but due to how we get so little kinky, we can't do much with it. There's so little we can do, I'm not gonna walk through the new opener. Only explain the addition. The only addition being Shinten. The Gekko, Kasha, Yukikaze at the start will give us 20 Kenki. After our second Yukikaze, we can use a Shinten at some point. Let's move into Stormblood skills. That'll be a bigger change to our opener and rotation. Level 62, Kenki Mastery 2. This is the big one. We're going from starving for Kenki to drowning in it. All main weapon skills that are not EI Jutsu have been given an added 5 Kenki. So Gekko, Kasha, Empi, Mangetsu, and Oka are all now worth 10. Yukikaze is worth 15. Third Eye is still 10. Fuga, Hakaze, Jinpu, and Shifu are all now worth 5. What before was a full 3 combos and 3 Sen being worth 20 Kenki is now 60 Kenki. 20 Kenki for each combo string. AoE is still only 15 per combo, but we'll hit 20 on the second Fuga. This is going to quickly lead you to capping your Kenki without actively trying to spend it. You will need to Shinten a lot more often to keep your Kenki levels from hitting 100. Level 62, Hisatsu Q10. This is the AoE version of Shinten. Q10 is a 5 yam AoE around yourself, doing 120 potency of damage to all enemies around you, costing 25 Kenki. This still follows the same rule your AoE has followed since we started. Three or more enemies use AoE. One or two enemies, Shinten is the better option. You aren't going to be as flooded with Kenki in your AoE rotation, but you will still get plenty of chances to use Q10. Level 66, Way of the Samurai. This is a basic power boost with poor wording. Hakaze is now 200 potency. Jinpu and Shifu are 120 potency uncomboed, but that also means the comboed potency was increased by 20 potency. They are now 280 potency each. Minor boost, but it exists. Level 68, Hagakure. This is the hardest skill of Samurai to use and justify, but ends up being the most important skill in the toolkit for Masters of the Job. I want to go into this before talking about the skill itself. Samurai has a near perfect 60 second loop they can follow for maximizing their damage. This loop is worth a lot more damage and makes the job feel much more smooth to play than you might expect, riding the line between a skill everyone should learn and min-maxing. Proper usage of Hagakure will ensure you perfectly loop your rotation, assuming no downtime in fights. Again, this loop has many benefits for comfort, damage, and aligning yourself with party-wide buffs. You might not be able to buff your team, but they definitely are buffing you. How this works is by doing an extra combo or two than you need, then using Hagakure to realign yourself. I'm only giving a surface level mention of this technique, but it is worth looking into deeper than what I say here. So let's see how Hagakure achieves this perfect loop. It instantly turns all current accumulated Sen into 10 Kenki each. If you have 1, 2, or 3 Sen, this becomes 10, 20, or 30 Kenki. This seems pretty bad, but it's a specific utility kind of skill. Not something we want to be using as much as we can like just about every other skill. Hagakure is a reset button for your Sen. Consider the following situation. You just finish a boss as you hit Yukikaze. You are now moving to the next pack of trash mobs in the dungeon, with Madari Setsugeka ready to go. Madari is a single target skill, but the tank is pulling multiple packs of enemies. There's six, seven, eight, or maybe even more enemies depending on the pull. Instead of using that Madare, you can turn it into a free Q10. That 3 Sen is 30 Kenki, or a Q10 plus 5 extra Kenki. Q10 is 120 potency per enemy, so on a group of 6 enemies, it is worth 720 potency, 
and frees up the GCD for starting your AoE combo. Without Hagakure, you actively just have to use that Midare on something just to be able to use Tenka Goken in this next trash pack. With it, that's no longer an issue you need to solve. The entire group of enemies is a danger in trash pools, so wasting time on Midare, no matter how strong it is, is less useful than taking down the entire group faster. This idea works in the reverse too, but less effective. If you have one or two sen when getting to a boss, this could be awkward for doing an opener. Hog a curry before starting the fight, and you can start your opener from the beginning, and while being ahead on Kenki. Again, that's less good of a use than the AoE version, and may even be just outright DPS negative, but it allows for a level of comfort. The real use of Hagakure in single target is ensuring the perfect rotation loop in lengthy boss fights. To do the perfect loop, you must account for your skill speed and GCD tier. You will need 2, 3, or 4 extra attacks in order to hit 60 seconds of rotation time. Starting from your first attack, if we take 2 GCDs, that's Hakaze and a Yukikaze. So at some point in your rotation, you will intentionally use a Yukikaze combo, then immediately hog a curry to convert that Sen into Kenki. This lines you up for doing your opener again at 60 seconds, perfectly aligning yourself with raid buffing windows and your cooldown timers running out. Again, this is the surface level. There's much more to it and worth learning. For now, try and understand that surface level. It can be hard to understand. Otherwise, this is why Hagakure is so useful and so important. Level 68, Ikishoten. On a lengthy 2 minute cooldown, this instantly increases your Kenki by 50. Remember how we were already drowning in Kenki? Well, in openers every 2 minutes, you're going to be drowning even more. Simply put though, it just does what it says on the tin. We make use of that big Kenki bonus in openers, but there's not really anything to explain. Just make sure you are using it for AoE too. Two whole Q10s to tear down the mob pack. Level 70, Hisatsu Garen. This is our other quest lock skill, and this is an extremely good one to have. If you are underwhelmed by Meditate, this one makes up for it. On a 2 minute cooldown, same as Ziki Shoten, this does a line AoE in the direction of your target. It is a Tenyom line, doing 500 potency to the first target and 375 potency to all enemies beyond the first. If you couldn't tell, that is a very strong hit. On as few as 3 enemies, that's already over 1000 potency. If you can Garen, especially if it's an AoE situation, hit as many enemies as you can. The issue is the shape. Fuga is a cone and will help in aiming Garen, but Oka, Magetsu, and Q10 are all circles, making you move in. Now you need to aim a line while doing that back and forth, where the best use could be 90 degrees around the group of enemies from where you're using Fuga. It could be a bit awkward. But you don't need to just use this in AoE. It's used better in AoE, but you'll be using this no matter how many targets, at least until level 72. 500 potency for the same cost as Shinten, which is only 250 potency. If you could throw it on a boss, do it. Free damage is nice, and in the case of Trials, what else are you going to use it on? There's only one boss anyway, and any ad phase isn't until later. So now we can move into our new opener. We have actual Kenki generation and major skills from Stormblood. We're going to get even more Kenki from Iki Shoten, spend it on Garen, and a lot of Shintens. It is much busier than at level 50 and 60 from how much Kenki we gain naturally, and the 50 from Iki Shoten. We leave this first weave bare for a potion window in high-end content, and to properly make sure Iki Shoten is available to use. I've had lag spikes that caused Iki Shoten to delay lighting up without delaying my rotation, so better safe than sorry. Because Fuka speeds up GCD, we try to keep double weaves to a minimum. The specific placements of these Shintens don't need to be in these specific spots. If you have the Kenki, spend it wherever you are comfortable, while still doing it under party buffs. Otherwise, that's it. A lot of managing our Kenki, and a lot higher damage just because of how much of it we do. Which leads nicely into the first karaoke opener. Karaoke openers involve me saying the skill names as they get used. Due to the length of these skill names, there may be some major cutting myself off. Just remember, when one skill name begins, that's the exact moment the game has registered the action being used. Pre-pull, Make Yoshisui, True North, Gecko, Kasha, Iki Shoten, Yuki Kaze, Madare Setsugeka, Hisatsu Garen, Akaze, Yuki Kaze, Hisatsu Shinten, Higinbana, 
Hisato Shinten. Hakaze. Hisato Shinten. Jinpu. Gecko. Hisato Shinten. Hakaze. Shifu. Kasha. Hakaze. Yukikaze. Midare Setsugeka. Hisato Shinten. But with that, we have the first real open and gone over and some real practice to put in to get used to it. Do so as you journey into Shadowbringers, as things don't slow down. Level 72, Hisatsu Sanai. On the same 120 second cooldown as Garen, this does 800 potency of damage to a single target. And I don't just mean the length of time, I mean the literal same cooldown. If you use either Sanai or Garen, both will go on cooldown. Garen is the AoE choice when there are two or more enemies. Single target, you will use Sanai instead. This is a major reason why we wanted to get used to using Garen in single target too, because Sanai will now just slot into its place. Level 74, Enhanced EI Jutsu. All this does is reduce the cast time of EI Jutsu to 1.3 seconds. It's simple, but also way more useful than you might expect. Half a second extra leeway for weaving or moving to dodge an attack sooner? It's nice. Level 76, Tsubame Geshi. Technically three skills in one, Tsubame Geshi has a 60 second cooldown and uses the EI Jutsu you just used with no cast time. You must use Tsubame Geshi immediately after EI Jutsu, as if it is a combo. This counts as a GCD, but it is not a weapon skill. It really is the exact same move twice in a row, which means Kashi Higginbana is garbage. Even in situations with two bosses, you will likely never Kashi Higginbana. It takes almost no effort to get one sen. Getting two Madares is a lot of work. Three sen takes a lot of time to accrue. As a result, it becomes better to just manually apply Higginbana on both targets. For Goken and Setsugeka, the uses remain as obvious as the EI Jutsu. One or two enemies, pop them with double Madares. If you're in AoE situations, do a double tank a Goken. Tsubamegeshi allows you to rush to big hits with no wait time. Well, other than the cooldown, but reopeners will be here before you know it. Level 78, Enhanced Fugetsu and Fuka. Simply buffs Fugetsu and Fuka from 10% to 13% each. This is a big part of the perfect 60 second rotation I mentioned during Hagakure. 3% doesn't seem like a lot, but it really changes your overall speed. Level 80, Shoha. With a recast of 15 seconds, a recast that basically will never come into play, this delivers an attack for 520 potency of damage. The issue is there's an addition to a kinky gauge. This is Meditation Stacks, which remember, we have the skill Meditate. Every three seconds of Meditate will grant you one Meditation Stack, and Shoha can be used when you have three Meditation Stacks. But that's not the main way to use Shoha. Using EI Jutsu will grant you one meditation stack. Tsubame Geshi does not grant you a meditation before you get to counting those. So every three uses of EI Jutsu is an extra 520 potency. It gets used more often than your two minute cooldowns, and yet seems to be something some players easily forget about. Find a good spot for Shoha on your bars to use it at the next convenient weaving window after a third EI Jutsu. At the very least, we'll be getting one use in our openers. And remember, any downtime sections of fights where you can use meditation, you're getting another Shoha. Make sure it gets used before your next EI Jutsu. But speaking of openers, let's plug these into our opener. It's faster due to the Fuka buff and has both Tsubame Geshi and Shoha slotted in. We're using Tsubame Geshi on the first Midare just to get it on cooldown and because it's the best option. Then at the end is Shoha, since the second Madare is the third EI Jutsu. We also want to swap Garen with Senai, since it's the single target version of the skill. But that's all there is to it. Otherwise, it's the same opener with extra Kenki still as well. So let's just quickly move on from this to get into the biggest change to our opener in Endwalker. Level 82, Shoha 2. Shoha 2 is the most awkwardly named AoE version of other attacks. Shoha 2 is an AoE version of Shoha. 200 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of yourself. Again, same AoE rules apply. 3 or more enemies, the AoE version is better than the single target version. Level 84, Way of the Samurai 2. Still poorly worded, 
Yukikaze, Gekko, and Kasha have been boosted in potency. Yukikaze is now 300 potency, and the other two are 330 potency with a 380 potency positional. Level 84, Enhanced Tsubame Geishi. This upgrades Tsubame Geishi into a skill with charges. The moment you use a charge, the cooldown will begin even if you already have a stored charge. In total, this is now a 2 minute cooldown, but still 60 seconds per charge. Otherwise, that's kinda all there is to it. You can use two Tsubame Geishis back to back, or at least close together. This leads to bigger burst sections, since you can get two Keishi Gokens or Keishi Setsugekas in short order. And we will aim to do so in openers. Level 86, Fuga Mastery and Fuko. This is one of the weirder upgrades. Fuga has become Fuko. Fuko is a 100 potency hit in a circle around you, the usual 5 yams. So instead of having to go from cone to circle to cone to circle, you only have to deal with Garen lines. Oh, and Fuko gives 10 Kenki instead of just 5, which is kinda nice. Level 88, Enhanced Make Yoshisui. Similar to Enhanced Tsubame Geishi, Make Yoshisui now has two charges, and while the cooldown is 55 seconds, we're still gonna treat it as a 60 second cooldown. Perfect loop and all that. But this is going to massively speed up openers, since we don't need to do full combos to get more Sen. We can get 6 Sen without a combo, which is a Madare, a Higginbana, and 2 out of 3 Sen for the next Madare. Or in AoE situations, 3 whole Tenka Gokens. That will likely involve a pause just because of how hectic AoE gets. But simply, double the usage means fast bursting. Level 90, Enhanced Tiki Shoten, Ogi Namakiri, and Keishi Namakiri. Enhanced Tiki Shoten grants you Ogi Namakiri ready anytime you use Iki Shoten. This buff lasts for 30 seconds, meaning you have to use it within that time, but you will definitely want to as this is a combination of Tenka Goken and Midari Setsugeka. It does an 8 yom AoE cone toward the target, doing 800 potency to the first target and 200 potency to all targets after the first. It also has the automatic critical hit and damage boosting crit rate effect Madare has. But this gets better, because upon hitting enemies with Ogi Namakiri, it will change form into Keishi Namakiri. And just like Tsubame Geishi, this is an exact copy of Ogi Namakiri that is also instant cast. This has become your absolutely biggest hit to use. And that's without also adding in on top, a meditation stack. That's right, you're progressing towards Shoha with Ogi Namakiri. The unfortunate part is you can only ever get it from Iki Shoten, so that puts it on essentially a 2 minute cooldown. So you're still mostly just relying on basic EI Jutsu cast for the Shoha stacks. If it's not being thrown out for AoE usage, you're putting it in openers and reopeners. Speaking of AoE though, let's give a general idea of how you can do your AoE quote unquote opener. AoE is far more flexible due to enemy count or size of the enemies. Dodging also tends to play a bigger role. So here's a general idea of how you can make an opener for AoE. What matters most is you're using all your big tools. Overall, we're following a similar flow to single target, but with a few adjustments made for AoE. The main thing is the Mikyo Shisui uses. If we tried to use Ogi Namakiri in the middle of Mikyo, we would push up against the time limit. Now let's talk about how this set of skills affects our main opener. And it does affect our opener quite a lot, so let's check it all out. So the first change we have is after our Senai. We weave in Mikyo Shisui to go through our second charge. We start with another Gekko. This is stronger than Yukikaze, and we don't need to use Hakaze first to get there. We can get our Higginbana that much faster and stronger. We're also using up our near-capped Kenki around this Higginbana. Then we pop into Ogi Namakiri. This will give us our third meditation stack in the back half of party buffs to Shoha, and pop out Kaishi Namakiri as well. We have Make Your Running still from the Higginbana, so we can Gekko and Kasha to get the Sen and give us enough Kenki for a Shinten and a Gyoten? Remember that point where I said Gyoten and Shinten are the same power? Divide them by the Kenki costs. 10 Kenki for 100 potency, and 25 Kenki for 250 potency. We may barely catch some party buffs before they wear off, making this worth spending. Then the normal Hakaze into Yukikaze will give us one last Shinten's worth of Kenki. Finish it off with your Madare and Tsubame it to use our second charge. Again, remember about the 60 second loop if you can, and be ready for 60 second opener windows. We won't be saving everything for full 
two minute burst reopeners. Mikyo and Tsubame Geshi can be used every minute. This way you don't accidentally overcap them and you keep consistent damage higher. But otherwise, let's karaoke this final opener. Push out the damage as we learn our favorite Bleach OP lyrics. Pre-pull. Make Yoshi sweet. True North. Gecko. Kasha. Ikishoten. Yuki Kaze. Midare Setsu Gekka. Hisatsu Sanai. Kaishi Setsu. Make Yoshi sweet. Gecko. Hisatsu Shinten. Higinbana. Hisatsu Shinten. Ogi Namakiri. Shoha. Keishi Namakiri. Gecko. Hisatsu Shinten. Kasha. Hisatsu Gyoten. Hakaze. Yuki Kaz. Hisatsu Shinten. Midare Setsu Gekka. Kaishi Setsu Gekka. And so Samurai has come to an end. Hope this helped you study the blade. May your controllers and keyboards be 1000 times folded Nippon Steel. Thank you for watching the slightly updated Samurai 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anne and Nidhogs lay waste to your enemies.